down with 60 grit, it's very coarse, but I've got a, a lot of old paint to remove, and that's because I've done this twice before. The first time I did it was with Hammerite, and it was a roller paint job, and the second time was a roller job with Rust-Oleum, but this is just going to be a, a brush technique, and this is the military paint here. So, military vehicle paint in satin. This is deep Brunswick green. And this one here is extra dark sea grey. So the bottom of the car will be grey. And the rest in dark Brunswick green. But first we need to rub down. And like I said, it's very coarse this. So that's the first job. Instead of doing a roller paint job like I've done the last two times, this is going to be a brush on method. And it's called barge painting. It's how you would paint a canal barge. And it involves a laying off brush, which I've got here, and an applicator here. So it will be horizontal square and then vertical square about nine inch by nine inch and with my laying off brush just going over that to smooth it all out move on to the next nine inch square and same thing so the paint is going on neat no need to thin it down for this a laying off brush an applicating brush, the paint, and this I think all came to around 110, 60 grit, and the rubbing block. I'm going to cut some of this to size, add it to the rubbing block, and let's get the worst off. This is the bonnet. The bonnet is going in the deep grey. The top part in Brunswick green. The bonnet will be in dark ocean grey as well as this between the sill and this door here. The Rust-Oleum is the blue and it never took. It had a few thin layers. The black was the hammerite smooth and that's still there. So between the two, I would say the Hammerite Smooth has lasted a lot better than the Rust-Oleum. So I've already done the alloy wheels in Hammerite Black, and it's going to have an outside overlay in the deep Brunswick Green. But on the outer spoke here is going to be the Brunswick Green, and only this inner spoke here where my finger is will be seen as black. So that will be two-tone. I'm going to pour the, the grey paint. Let me just check its exact name. Extra dark sea green. Military trade paint. And I'm going to pour some into a little tin. So I'm not taking the big tin out. The brush is big enough to fit in there. And I've got my laying off brush to make strokes and it's horizontal first and then vertical to finish off and then lay it off vertically as well and it should smooth out all the uh, inconsistencies in the brush marks i'm going to open this and give it a stir and then only transport a small amount at a time the time the brunswick green is married up with that and then you'll see the whole effect taking place. So the 60 grit is putting a really good key on this.
here's a patch that's been lifted let's go around see what can be done with this I can feather out the edges really nice we'll see if I can actually get a coat of the ocean grey on this today So I'm going to do a test patch here and I want to try and avoid wiping the brush because I do want it to go on thick that means catching the paint by rotating the brush little nine inch square So this actually might take two coats. Turn that brush, don't wipe it on the side, that just wipes paint off your brush, you, you don't want it back in the tin, you want it on your work surface. So close up, you can see some of them brush marks are starting to dissipate. I'm not going to use a laying off brush until this paint is a lot drier because this side of the van is in the shade. And notice how I'm not flowing that way and flicking, otherwise, I'm going to flick it over where I've just done. So, really, just take it one way like that and then the finish comes from bringing it down and the same now for this lower part here 
just to join it all up together once it's dried off again I'm going to come back to the uh, laying off brush and bring it out I'm just going to let that dry a bit first it's going on nice so a little six to nine inch square nice and thick don't scrimp on what you're doing there so two coats like this should easily be enough that's just a little six inch square marry it up to the last one I just did and I really don't care at all about the brush lines we can take most of them out with a laying off brush again don't wipe the brush get the paint onto the brush and then onto your work surface okay now it's going a little tacky because it's a nice hot day get my laying off brush and join all this section in as one This time I'm wearing gloves. I've got the right amount of coats that I want on the dark ocean grey. It's time to break open the deep Brunswick green. Okay, that really does need a good mixing up. And if you're wondering where you might have seen the dark Brunswick green before, I'll let you know at the end. I'm going to make myself a new paint kettle using this milk jug. I'm just going to put a couple of scoops in my kettle for now. Because I'm only going to put a couple of coats on the tailgate. I'm painting this just as it's going night time really. It's a bit cooler. And do all this part here down to the bumper. A lot of the plastic trim is going to be um, done in black right at the very end so that's why I don't cover these things up now the brush is empty but what I can do is wipe off the excess here to create a little adhesion so it'll stick better when I do load the brush up load it up in the usual manner and get that here onto the van and I'm gonna get close to the glass without actually going on it and what I'm doing is rotating the brush for that stroke rotating it again and then I'm gonna actually cut in to the light here rather than tape it off because it will have new lenses very soon and now I can wipe my brush off as I tip off here and then move along or down and wipe the excess off here Okay, again just in one direction, that way. Rotate my brush. Uh, and 
then tip off here this is just the first coat but I'll show you how I cut in cutting in requires to get as close to the edge with the bristle side and just wobble it from side to side the brush like that one thing I don't want to do is do this motion of trying to get close I come in from the side and wobble the brush right up to the edge and pull back right up to the edge pull back right up to the edge pull back and then now I can blend it all in and the brush marks do disappear because it has a, a kind of a built-in leveler or conditioner to the paint which will fill in the brush strokes and you can see this is where I just wiped the excess off the brush and it will really adhere properly now this next coat here on the bottom without it dripping onto the bumper here rainy day jobs rubbing that first coat down 240 1200 i've got an eight and a 600 on the bonnet or the hood i had to use um i think a 240 because there were paint runs in it and they soon came off and they can knock it back then to a finer grit the green that i've painted um, I can get away with a 1200 and a very light soapy rub down and every single brush mark is gone but I can apply another coat and do the same so a nice sunny day or a dry day I can get the paint on and then days like this when I can't paint at least I can rub down wet and dry I think the 1200 will do and I can do where I've painted the green and I don't need such coarse grit for that remember I am going to need another coat of paint this is a rainy day job and pretty course 240 and sponge there's not a brush mark in that it's left a lot of dust on here so it doesn't need another coat so it looks like I'll be putting a coat on, rubbing it down and putting another coat on until I'm happy with the finish. So don't worry about this dust, that's all it is, look. That comes off. And I can get to my original colour again there. 
and this whole other side of the van which I think I might do with a roller just to see how it goes this is three coats of military paint on this here and rubbed down on the wing mirror nice maybe another rub down where I can see some brush lines on the hood on the bonnet as we call it here in UK the brush lines have been minimalized I think the other coat I will put on with a roller just to see what the difference is right the roller technique and what I'm going to do is put this roller into a carrier bag that way I can look after the tray and it'll last a lot longer just throw the bag when I'm finished these again throw these when I'm finished so this is one side of the upper panel all rubbed down and here I'm going to try with the roller this is how I used to do it with the rust-oleum same technique from left to right and try and get these marks out now these little marks you see the bubbles I can also get out with a brush I'm not too bothered about getting right up to the edge here because I'll be also brushing it so great thing about this paint is I don't have to use methylated spirits or dilute it and this may even give a better finish I'm not too sure we'll know tomorrow morning so back in load it up and wipe it off instead of having brush lines to try and get out of this paint you can see I've got all these little dots which are the air bubbles so I don't know how you're gonna feel about each of these and I will be cutting in with a brush to get these parts here that, which are visible still in blue that's a job for a brush I think I will continue tipping off with a brush even though the applicator is a roller bonnet lovely and smooth no runs just needs another recoat coming around the side front wing needs a rub down this door still needs to be done I don't need to rub down the whole lot just in patches the tailgate I'll give you a close-up with my finger as comparison you can see there's no runs no brush marks really smooth there and this is why I wear gloves I've got paint under my nail the main panel has been done with a roller and it is a lot smoother there's no runs in it just needs a light flick over with some 1200 grit the door has been rubbed down now I'm going to roller it without tipping off just leaving it and rolling it over and over again till them little air pockets are gone I'm not going right up to the edge that's a job for a brush so I'm just going to do the main panel and then come back for the fine cutting in with a brush now I could cut in first or come back to it I might even just do that first so brand new never been used now these are really cheap brushes and I know everyone says buy expensive brushes and look after them with resin acrylic it is really hard to keep your brush clean petrol is what you use for acrylic and resin uh, not turpentine or methylated spirit I'm only gonna dip the very end in 
bring the bris bristles right up to the edge a little wobble and that's all it needs and pull down to see if we can make this blue disappear it's getting there give it a little wobble keep pushing up and up and up pull down just going around the wing mirror and you can see the bit in blue where I failed to do it last time because I just hit it with a roller when I should have cut in first there you go let's feather out and the same the other end switch hands now I'm left handed but I can do this right handed it's not a problem side and we can see the difference between one side and the other Let's keep getting these little air bubbles out so the next time you see this it should all be the correct colors Okay, we're on the final stage now which is uh, to black up all the trim and the bumpers and any little bits like that and cleaning any paint off where it shouldn't be like on the window or the number plate anything like that it's just a normal simple hammerite smooth this is the end of a foam roller I can dip it into the paint wipe a bit off and hand roller it like this to get really close to where it needs to be I've got to redo the grey on the bonnet on the hood because I started doing it and it started raining and it's left all the paint dots on the hood on the bonnet and these are the rain frettles that settled although the paintwork is lovely and smooth so it does need another rub down and another recoat that was roller only I've got to rub down that again and go over it again but it's not a day for that but it's a good day to finish up with the hammerite smooth it'll be used in quite a liberal way I've already painted the grill on the front I've just done under here where the lens is Again, the front part still needs doing, so from the side, this part of the bumper is all been done. That's blacked up a treat. I'm not sure whether I like the spoke or not, but I can always black it up again if I don't. I'll also be getting a razor blade and trying to get some of this blue off the lens. And the sill all needs to be rubbed down again, really. Part of the cleaning up is here as well, that's the old blue on the roof rack and I need to get some blue off here on the back window I'll do that with a razor blade so let's dip in this old foam the 
whole lip by hand and I can get really close up to the green without touching it. This process is quite slow, but I'm not in a rush. And then I can stipple the rest of it just by dabbing like this. Or just give it a roll of technique to finish off the job. Now I've cut in on the trim, I can load the actual roller foam and just kind of use it like a paintbrush. and put some tape across and matched in the green with the grey. And it's time to do the hammerite on wheels and I've blacked up the entire wheel. To make the snake skin effect, it's just a case of getting the colour and very lightly brushing it over. It's a case of pulling as much material off your brush, so in other words, back into your tin. And the lightest of strokes. And with the back of my brush, I can slap the paint onto the existing green and feather it in. You don't want to overdo this at an early stage because you want to stand back and decide if you want more black. And pat it out. The green on its own stood out far too much. So very light. Get that on. Pat it out. hardly any paint on the brush here. It's like I'm wiping off the excess. And it's a mottled snakeskin effect that we're after.
Now from a distance you can't tell what colour that is, whether it should be black or green. A little more there. And even do the dust guard underneath. Very thin coat. And I've got all sorts of colours on there that need to be taken out. Well, I've never had that before. to nip out and get another brush or two this is why my brushes only cost one or two pound they're disposable I don't have to worry about washing them stage one is putting the black onto the wheel which I've done and stage two is only the spokes need to go in in green and I haven't got any tape for this to mask off what I'm doing is a roller technique to ensure only the spokes get done. Now this bag in the tray is the same bag which had the grey. I've just turned it inside out and I'm only going to apply the actual spoke downwards. And with a brush, I would start from the middle and paint outwards and it ensures that no paint actually goes onto the black where we don't want it but in the case of a roller I can just bring it down and maybe do a sort of a mottled effect do the whole spoke like that you notice how none actually goes inside now I want to dab that off for that I have a microfiber towel and dab off what I've just put on and hopefully we can get a nice mottled effect So there's the mottle effect and the snake skin would be to cover the whole lot in a very thick green and then come back over and mottle on the black so it depends whether you want to mottle on the, the green or the black. If I want it darker, I'll have to paint the whole lot green and then add on the black overlay and dab that off. So that's mottled green on a black background. And this is mottled black on a green background. Okay, I'll be wrapping it up here in a minute. This video's gone on long enough. But I do want to draw to some conclusions. This van has had, first of all, Hammerite, then Rust-Oleum, then Trade Military Paint. Out of the three, the Trade Military Paint is the best. Now, the Rust-Oleum chipped away after about a year and a half after having a few thin coats. Second best would have been the Hammerite that didn't chip or peel. This is 
the trade military paint, it's the toughest. However, when it's curing, three days it's still very soft. I would paint it, then let it cure for a good two weeks. Two weeks in, it is solid, absolutely solid. Which left the least brush marks or roller marks? That would be the military trade paint. Whether you roller it or brush it, doesn't leave brush lines and you don't get the orange peel effect either that I had with the Hammerite or the Rust-Oleum. The military trade paint was the dearest. I could have gone a lot smaller with the tins. I've hardly used any of it. The cost of them bigger five litres, there, there was only 20 quid difference in it. So I thought I would get an extra 20 quid's worth and get 100% more paint for 20 quid. So every year this can just have a little brush over, a little roller over and refresh every year. It has a conditioner in it that makes the brush marks and the orange peel effect of a roller just disappear. Happy trials.